what we have here is two identical trucks, two identical years, and two identical submodels. They're the same, but they're not the same. Stick around. Off, just looking at both of these you really can't tell a difference besides maybe the gray one over there's got little beefier tires on it but other than that what's the difference first of all we have a two-wheel drive truck over here over here we have a four-wheel drive truck oh, wait there's one more difference we have a 7.5 liter 460 in this one we have a 5.8 liter 351 Windsor in this one. Now these trucks are near identical other than there's neat little things that are different about them. For this one here, we have the factory installed AC. And this one over here is the dealership installed AC. Both came stock sold from the dealership with these options. And in 1986, you could actually get these F250s with the AC delete. Now the biggest reason why I believe that this truck did not come with AC from the factory and was a dealership option was because this is a Colorado truck. And if you can't tell by the little rust on the back of this one, it's been through some salt. It's seen some miles. It's seen some mountain terrains, I'm sure. But this one, on the other hand, has been in the southeast its entire life and has been used to haul horses and was an actual farm truck. If you can't tell by this little sticker back here, it's pretty neat. Also, it has a fifth wheel connection. Now, both of these trucks have been survived other than their paint job to be about 95% stock. Other than the intake and a carburetor on this one. And also, this one has an Edelbrock carburetor. But other than that, it is 100% stock. This truck was yanked out of an older gentleman's backyard that had been sitting for at least... 12 years if I remember right and we brought this one back around to the daily driver that it is now and it is an absolutely fantastic truck and the AC works and this one here has never been off the road since 1986 I got this off of the second owner of this truck and it has never been off the road ever an interesting thing with these trucks too both of these since they are f-250s they are both non catalyst vehicles and what that means is they do not come with catalytic converters like all the cars did back in 86. That was a standard issue on all cars from I believe around 1973, the early mid 70s. All cars were supposed to have catalytic converters. Now if we go around here, one of the biggest differences between these two trucks is that the four wheel drive 460 truck has two 19 gallon tanks while the 351 truck only has one 19 gallon tank. So this was a hauling up and down the town rig and this one over here was uh, we're going on a long trip rig now if we come on in on the captain side you'll see we have the XL trim with the red on red with the believed to be only 151,000 miles on it judging by the pedal wear and stuff I know that truck over there is a confirmed 147,000 mile truck and the, the pedal wear looks almost identical to the gray truck over there so my guess is that's 151,000 miles. If we go on in the gray truck here. You see, this is more of a work truck over here. We got the cloth seat actually over here on this one. And also, another huge difference. We got a four-speed, and that truck over there is a three-speed automatic. Now, as I mentioned, these two trucks are 95% completely stock so that's even down to the exhaust they have completely stock exhaust so let's do an exhaust comparison on these two
can't tell by the red interior, we're in a 351 truck. We're going to take this one down the road and we're going to compare both of these two trucks to see do they really drive any differently. So let's go for a ride. So this one is an automatic. It's going to be a lot easier to drive than the other truck. Maybe. Depends if you're used to driving a stick shift or not. To me, I like the stick shift, but when you have the automatic, oh, it's nice. It's cruising 45 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour. This truck is absolutely great, and it does everything you ever need it to do. Camera mount, though. It's all right. Going back to this truck. Wind noise in here. You're in a old truck. Wind noise is nuts. You can't tell by the wind noise in here. This truck needs new seals around the doors, around the windows. It's old, like I said, it's been sitting for 10 plus years. But to get you to town and back, to go to the hardware store, get your wood, come back, go to the dump, take your trash, this is an absolutely great truck. Like I said, the heat and the AC work, so time of the year, don't matter. This truck is gonna get it done regardless of the heat or the cold. This truck will get you there. So how's this truck drive? It drives pretty smooth for what you would think an 80s truck would drive. It's actually not that bad. I mean, it's a little stiff. You got your three quarter ton axles in the back and all. You know, this truck, it's not like a new truck. They have a softer suspension in the new trucks. But these, this truck here, it's kind of hard to find, but I did find that this truck can haul 9,000 pounds. That's pretty impressive for just a little small block. Just for being a little small block, this is everything that you could ever need in a truck. AC, heat, it's got plenty of power. You have a fifth wheel just in case you need it. You can tow almost 10,000 pounds, which I'm sure from what I was looking at, I did see one website saying that this thing could haul 12,500 pounds, but I don't know if that's accurate. I wonder if that was for the diesel, the 6.9. I'm not sure. I'm sure it would, but I don't know for how long. It was just a short little drive in this truck great truck love this truck now I've actually never done a side-by-side -side comparison to this I've I've owned these trucks for for quite a while now and I've never driven one and then driven the other right afterwards so I really don't know I'm assuming this one's gonna be a little softer than the four-wheel drive truck that should be a little bit more rough with that being said let's go jump in a great truck and let's go for a ride all right in the captain's seat of the f-250 let's go for a ride Make sure we're in neutral. You know you got a carburetor tuned right when it fires up instantly like that. And I don't know if the factory Holly that was on here would have done that. And I'm a Holly guy. I'm a Holly guy. But nothing cold starts better than an Edelbrock. I said it. I said it. I hate to admit it, but I said it. So let's go for a ride. First off, what you can probably tell, this truck is a lot quieter. We still need window seals and door seals and all because we got a little bit of wind noise, but for the most part, this thing is pretty quiet in here. Other than, I don't know if you can hear the exhaust leak or not. But that's one thing I'm scared to touch because this thing is so old. They've, they've gone through thousands of heat cycles and I'm sure they got a lot of rust. But as we were comparing them both, this thing does ride a little bit more stiff, I can tell. That's one thing you just gotta get over. You're in a truck. Expect it to be a little rough. The biggest thing why I wanted to do this video is that red truck I have has been for sale for a long time. Like we're coming up on almost like six months has been for sale. And I know I'm probably a little high, but you gotta start high and then they gotta, you know, whoever wants to buy it, they gotta dig you down to see where your actual price is. But that truck is for sale right now for 5,000 or best offer. And I know for a fact, I have $3,800 into it with all new parts. It is an absolute great truck. It is a fun truck and it will get you to point A to point B. And like I said, the heat and the AC work. If we're talking about speed with both of these trucks, they're not fast. But the cool thing about them though, it's a 351 Windsor and we got a 460. There are options that you can pick from the Summit Racing Catalog and make these things 500 horsepower easy. 
maybe not as easy with the, with the 351. But this 460 heads cam intake, I mean, you're at 500 easy, easy. Bad thing about the 460 trucks in 1986, I think it was all through the 80s, had a timing chain that retarded the cam, I think four or six degrees or something like that. I mean, it was a ridiculous amount. And that cut a lot of horsepower. And this truck here has actually had the timing chain from the previous 460s. So it got that four to six degrees added to it. And what I have heard, these 460 trucks couldn't even do a burnout with the original timing gear and timing and cam timing and all that stuff. This truck here can do a burnout, trust me. So to compare specs on these two, again, this was really hard to find surprisingly. You know, considering how many years these trucks were made and how long that these engines and transmissions were combined together and these specs and horsepowers, they should be available. But I keep finding so many different numbers just for the same year. But what I've come down to is from the spec sheet that I could find that I think is reliable, but I don't know. The 460 had 225 horsepower and 364 foot-pounds of torque. The 351 truck had 210 horsepower, 310 foot-pounds of torque. Not that bad. And if you compare to like a 90s, early 2000s, or even like a mid like 2005, 2010, in between their truck, they're not that far off from that. And a comparison of what I found for the towing capacity of, the, of this truck, and again, I believe it was the same. It, it was around 9,000 pounds for the towing capacity of this. But I also found the same thing for the 351 truck is at 12.5. Now I could stand for this truck here because I know for a fact this truck is hauled a 13,000 pound load board. The previous owner, which I've been friends with him for since I was a kid, is my friend's father, and which I, I still remain fairly close to him today. He's a very, very good gentleman. Engine braking is huge in this truck because the brakes not that good. Every other spec to both of these trucks is identical. The length, the cabin size, brake size. They both have disc in the front, drums in the back, same size, everything. Just the biggest difference in both of these trucks is there's a different transmission, different engine, and one's two-wheel drive and one's four-wheel drive. Oh, and if you want to consider the AC units, which is kind of, which I think is really cool. I, I didn't know that, and I was wondering why, but both the same years, they have different AC units. One's a dealership option, one's a factory option. Interesting. And like I said, you can order these trucks with the AC delete. And I don't know how much that would have saved you back then. This was really hard to find, but website that I'm trusting, the original price for an F-250 in 1986, which the base would have just come with a 302 or an inline six. And the base price on those started out at around $8,500. That's not bad. Now, that's probably considering, you know, no AC, you just got a base trim, no fancy seats, you know, it may or may not have had a radio. I don't even know if they did that back then. You know, if they did the radio deletes and stuff. That might have been just, the, you know, early, earlier, you know, way in the 60s and 50s and stuff like that. Then other trim levels, you got the base, you got the XL, then the XLT, then you had Lariats back then. And the funny thing that I thought about these is Lariat, even to this day, the Lariat is about the top of the trim levels without going into the, you know, the, the dealership option stuff. But for factory option stuff, Lariat, I believe, is about the highest you can get. And in 1986, they did not come with leather seats. They came with the cloth seats, and they were like the dual color cloth, and super, super nice and comfortable. But I just think that's kind of 
ironic is that the rolls have kind of twisted around is that now the Lariats all come with leather seats. Leather's the highest option. But, you know, back then, I don't know if they actually had leather. They probably had just vinyl. And I will probably say Ford had the best vinyl back then. And out of all, out of the big three, you know, the, the Chrysler and the GM stuff, I think Ford had the best vinyl that, that held up over time. Just from going through the junkyards and picking around and, and just seeing what I've seen. Um, I think Ford did a good job with that. <laughs> that is not check for you. Going back to the prices, like I said, it's really hard to find, but the, the website that I found that was most trustworthy, that I feel is most trustworthy, is that these trucks range from around $8,500 to about $13,500. Brand new. And I'm sure there's options and dealership stuff that you can add on back in the day, and I'm sure you know, that's just MSRP, and I'm sure that's not what they really sold for. But if I had to guess, they were probably around 15 to 18 at the most. Just by a little bit of research that I did. Now don't you go and take my word for that, because I don't really know. But what I'm getting at is that those trucks, considering, you know, they might have been expensive back then, but considering prices now, these trucks are dirt cheap. And this is the whole reason for this video. Why are these trucks so darn cheap? And they're stupid reliable. Like I said, this truck here has never been off the road, ever. And that other truck, yeah, it sat for 10 years. Now I'm pretty sure the gentleman who owned that passed away. And that's the only reason why that truck was off the road. And the person who got it, which was his son, I don't think he had any ambition to get that thing back on the road. And I don't know if he even knew anything about cars or trucks. But, you know, everybody grows up in a different, you know, in a different home. He may not have learned any of that stuff or had any desire to learn any of that stuff. You know, that's on him. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But the 10 years that it sat, when I found out what to be wrong with it, nothing. So I literally think that truck was parked because the gentleman passed away. So if the gentleman had not passed away, that truck would probably still be on the road as it was 10 years ago. The prices of these trucks now, I've seen trucks go for 1500 bucks that are kind of in pieces. They need interior work and the engine, you know, the carburetor may start one day but then the next day the needle stick and you gotta go out there with a screwdriver and beat the crap out of it and then, then it'll start. But what do you expect from an old carburetor? Junk gas. And then I've also seen them in decent shape, about as good a shape as what I have here, both of my trucks. Now they both need paint jobs but they run and drive and the AC works which is a huge bonus being in the southeast of the United States. I've seen those trucks go from anywhere from 3500 bucks to 8000 I don't know if they're selling at that, but I've seen them advertised at that. And so getting into your really, really nice trucks, I've seen them completely factory and they may have got a respray uh, anywhere from inline six, 302, 351. And I believe you can even get the 400 modified in these in the 80s, like the 81, 80, 80, 81, something like that. And I think those are just leftovers from the 70s they are just trying to get rid of them. You can get the so I have seen those completely unmolested, possibly a respray, even if it's like completely original or, or a frame off restoration. I've seen those, believe it or not, being listed for anywhere from ten thousand to twenty-five thousand, and that's a huge range. What I have seen sold just by watching the Meekum on the TV very many of them that come through the line, I've seen them go pretty much perfect condition for less than $20,000. To me, that's a great deal for an extremely good truck. I, I think everybody's sleeping on these trucks. I, I don't get it. These trucks are extremely reliable. Engines and the transmissions, the parts for these trucks, they were made forever, so you can pretty much still 
go to the parts stores and get parts for these things. And I mean, shoot, you can go to O'Reilly's and get an intake for, for a 351 Windsor today. You don't have to wait for it. At least my O'Reilly's does. I mean, it's a cool O'Reilly. Stuff for these trucks is almost as available as a small block Chevy. This is probably the next in line with parts for these trucks. And I think people are sleeping on them. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because people like me, and hopefully people like you, are wanting to snag these trucks up and, and actually use them or restore them and actually drive them. That's on the market, you know. And, and I, I'm not really hating it, to be honest. I wish people didn't wake up to the fact that the second gen F bodies are worth as much as they are now. I mean, my goodness. My 79 Firebird that I bought in 2009 was listed for 2,500 bucks, ran and drove, and the AC worked. Where are you gonna find one like that now? That was 2009. You ain't gonna find one like that no more. Unbelievable. You're gonna find one 2,500 bucks that doesn't have a title and is missing the engine. That's what you're gonna find today. You'll be lucky to have a TH350 to go with it. One thing that I could probably think why people are sleeping on these trucks is that they're ugly. I said it. Now these bullnose people are probably going to come after me, but they are ugly. And I said it. And I own two of them, so easy. So I'm going to it off right here. What do you guys think? Are these trucks underpriced? Overpriced? Are they, are they not worth looking into? Why are these trucks overlooked? In my opinion, I think because they're ugly and the, the, they got the same engine and transmissions for the previous models that look better. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I'm gonna end it off right there. If you guys like content like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy.